pictures of these Civil War uh, people. And I, I could have other pictures here, but this is the only one of uh, what I'm going to talk about tonight that probably uh, you, you can't put a face with. This is uh, General John Sedgwick. Let me tell you a little bit about him. He was born in September 13th, 1813 in Cornwall Hollow in the Berkshire Mountains of Northwest Connecticut. He attended the Sharon Academy and he taught for two years before receiving an appointment to the U.S. Military Academy at West Point. Sedgwick graduated in 1837 in the middle of a uh, prodigious class that included Braxton Bragg, Jubal Early, John C. Pemberton, and Joseph Hooker. If you know anything about the Civil War, you'll recognize those names, but those were major players. He was commissioned a second lieutenant in the artillery. Artillery? Artillery. <laughs> artillery. And went on, that's, that's going to be a new word, artillery. And went on to fight the Seminoles in Florida and aid in the removal of the Cherokee Nation from Georgia. At the outbreak of the Civil War in 1861, Sedgwick reported to Washington, D.C. to serve as acting inspector general of the city and was promoted to brigadier general of, of the volunteers in August. He commanded a division in Edwin Bull Sumner's corpse during General George McClellan's peninsula campaign, and he was wounded in the arm and the leg at the Battle of Fraser's Farm in Glendale on June 30th, 1862. He was promoted to Major General on the 4th of July. In the early summer of 1864, Sedgwick led his corps with typical reliability at the outset of Grant's overland campaign at the Battle of Spots Spotsville Vania Courthouse. He was personally directing artillery, artillery placements and forming his line. The Confederate enemy were firing at the Union soldiers about a thousand yards away, and Sedgwick noticed his men ducking down for cover each time they heard a muzzle blast in the distance. Okay, so in your mind here, you've got this commanding general. Uh, he's trying to form a line, and his men are flinching every time they hear a muzzle blast. And these are from the, uh, the enemy lines, and they're a thousand yards away. Okay. The general, however, was unflinching, and he tried to convince his men that they were not in any danger of getting shot from such a far distance. So with confidence, he shouted to his men, they couldn't hit an elephant at this distance. Just then, in a moment of profound irony, he was struck and killed by a Confederate bullet. You know, the things that you sometimes read on the internet are, are uh, you know, you don't know if everything is true. So I researched this particular story uh, extensively, and that actually happened by all accounts. Now, there is some discrepancy there. Some people says he never got out that sentence. They couldn't hit an elephant at this dis, and that's when the bullet hit. But nonetheless, he was trying to say they couldn't hit a bullet at, uh, an elephant at this distance. He got shot. Uh, Steve Jobs, last words. Steve Jobs, he's the, uh, the creator of Apple. You probably have one of his products in your purse or in your pocket. Okay. Last words. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. And he died. JFK, in response to Nellie Conley saying, you certainly can't say Dallas doesn't love you. His response was, no, you certainly can't. And that's when the bullet hit his head. Interestingly enough, C.S. Lewis, uh, the great Christian apologist, died the same day that JFK died. And he had mentioned that he didn't want any hullabaloo about his death. And because JFK died the same day, C.S. Lewis's death was overshadowed by the assassination. Abraham Lincoln, last words. She won't think anything about it. He was responding to his wife, Clara Harris, who was sitting next to them and was wondering about he and Lincoln and his wife holding hands. She was worried about what her friend Clara Harris would think about Lincoln holding her hands. And so she mentioned that to Lincoln, and that's when he said, she won't 
think anything about it. Elvis Presley. Okay, I won't, were his last words. His housekeeper uh, had told him not to fall asleep in there. He had told her he was going to the bathroom. She said, don't fall asleep in there. And he said back, okay, I won't. Those were his last words. Turn in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 28. Last words, as you're turning to your Bible, in your Bible to Matthew 28, last words I think are important. I'm wondering, uh, this, this year we've had a lot of deaths, public deaths, celebrity deaths, uh, deaths in this own community, in the Chattanooga community. And so I was thinking about last words in particular. And if you had the chance, If you had the chance, you knew your time was approaching, what would you say? What would be your last words? There's quite a few people that actually get that opportunity to think about what their parting words are going to be, what they want to be remembered for. A lot of people don't get that chance. Lincoln had no idea he was about to be shot, neither did Kennedy. Elvis Presley had no idea he was going to suffer a heart attack. You know, so sometimes the words, the last words we speak, we have no idea those are the last words we're going to speak. But for those that do, they know that their time is approaching. I would say that most people give that serious thought. I don't recall the person's name. There was a, uh, a professor who did the last lecture, wrote a book about it. Uh, it's a really great thing. You can YouTube it still. Um, just Google the last lecture. And he talks. He knows he has pancreatic cancer and he's, he's going to be dying. So he gives some really great advice. People put a lot of thought when they know their time is approaching to the last words they're ever going to speak. So when we look at the Bible and we look at Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, I think it's extremely important to pay attention, not to, obviously everything he said is important, but the last things that he said on earth, and you're very familiar with this passage, I've talked about it before, David has talked about it, Matthew chapter 28, otherwise known as the Great Commission, beginning in verse 18, and Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me, verse 19, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. The last words he said while on this earth. As he hung on the cross, he said seven different things as well. But Jesus knew he was coming back. And Jesus knew that the last words that he would speak to those who had been with him for those years would be these right here. I think those words are extremely important. And I think it's something that we as Christians today maybe don't give as much importance as we should. We talk about making disciples of other people. Is that a thought that fills your mind on a daily basis? If not, it should be should be something that you're constantly thinking about. Who am I going to bring to Christ today? Those could be your last words. Trying to bring somebody to Christ. Those could be your last words. Wouldn't that be a great way to be remembered? What was, what did, what, what was Craig saying the last time you guys had a conversation? You know what? He was talking about Jesus to me. I can live with that. But too often, 
The words that I leave in parting with people, friends, co-workers, neighbors, are not. And I know that we all have our lives to live. And, you know, it's almost impossible to have each word that you speak to somebody be something extraordinary, something meaningful. The last words I had with my mom and dad, I try to end every conversation with them with the words, I love you. Those are good ending words. Those are good last words. But as we sit here as a body of Christians, as a family, I think it would behoove us to reflect on this scripture and the last words that Jesus shared with those who knew him best. It was a commission. It's marching orders. What he, that's what he was doing. He was giving marching orders. That's what I want you to do. Go make disciples. And if you make that, if we make that more of a habit, I think that we don't have to worry so much about what our last words will be. Perhaps. So that's the challenge tonight. What are your last words? What do you want your last words to be? What do you hope that your last words will be? Are they going to be meaningful? Something that's going to impact somebody for the cause of Christ? It's certainly a worthy goal. Something to strive towards. Anybody that's here tonight that maybe, maybe some of these words have caused you to think about the last words you had with a coworker. Maybe they weren't good. The last words you had with a friend. You, you don't know. Those could be the last words. Maybe there's things that you need to get fixed. Maybe that you have thought about these things and are sitting here tonight and you've never responded to the gospel. You've never been baptized. And Jesus also said those words in his departing thoughts to his disciples. Or perhaps you just need the prayers of this congregation. If there is anything that we can do as your family, you can come down front as we stand and sing.